It'd be a good idea. Okay, the blue light. Okay. Well, good afternoon, folks. This is Jim Hodson along with Kevin Renshaw. We're here at the Fort Worth Aviation Museum, home to the most touchable warbirds in Texas. And we're here to do an update on the YF-16 today. We were just talking. We've had the airplane now for 18 months and uh, we haven't had an update in about two or three. It's so. been since July or so. So uh, I'm gonna just kind of turn it over to Kevin and let him talk about all of this, the cool stuff that they've been doing here. Okay, so I think last time we talked, we had just installed the landing gear on the aircraft. You can see we've got it all in here. We cleaned up the bays, we repainted the, the landing gear bays. Uh, that's actually a set of Block 25 landing gear because the original gear was thrown away a long time ago. The lab had it up on a pole uh, we've been cleaning up things around the fuselage, working out a lot of corrosion issues. You can see where we've got some of the engine bay panels off right now. Uh, we, we had to get to those. Uh, the biggest thing we're working on right now, yeah, you can see the structure in the, inside the bay here. We've got a lot of things opened up. We're having to replace a lot of these nut plates. Remember, the airplane was stored upside down, and it collected a lot of water. Right. So we had a lot of places where there was just the nuts and, and the bolts were just a solid mass of rust. Let's talk, talk about the landing gear a second, because we haven't yeah. done that in a while. And as I, as I stand here and look at it, I'm just amazed because the landing gear you found just fit right in this. It did. It? Well, the same guy designed the prototype and the production gear, a guy named Travis Putman. And he said it worked so well on the prototype in terms of the retraction scheme that he just kept all the attach points the same. Now, some of the metal in the individual struts got thicker as the weight of the airplane went up. Right. Okay. But the pivot locations and the way the retraction mechanism works, those all stayed exactly the same. So we actually were able to just slip fit this in. All the pins fit. We ran the nuts and bolts into it. Uh, one big difference is in the factory, all three of these struts show up on a special dolly already assembled, and they lift it all in one piece. Oh, okay. We okay, had a, we had a pallet full of bits and pieces. Yeah. And we assembled it one chunk at a time since we didn't have a hydraulic lift for it. Uh, we put in the, the pivot strut first, right. attached the shock strut, which is what retracts here, and then the, uh, the, the uh, downlock link and the retract actuator. Now, the retract actuator is not attached to anything at this point. Right. The other thing we had to do was when we got the airplane, we did not have the landing gear doors. The lab had thrown those away. These had been modified. This was the airplane that also shot the AIM-7 off the door. Right. So they had done modified doors. Uh, you can see these big steel fittings with landing gear attaches. From the same place we got the landing gear, we got landing gear doors. And if we come around the back of the wing here, I'll you can come that. through this way. I'll come around. This is a set of production landing gear doors that we modified to fit this airplane. The biggest modification was that there was a different location for the, the door actuator. On the YF, it was up on top, and there were these linkages that came down to push the door out of the way. Uh, it was kind of a, a Mickey Mouse thing. On the production, they, as they stretched the airplane, they made the landing gear bay four inches longer and went with a real simple really? actuator at the front of the bay. So these doors were four inches longer than we needed. So okay. being good aircraft modifiers, we just sawed off four inches. We had to make new hinges here. The parts that are painted in green primer match those existing door hinges. So we, we modified a, a production door, and it actually would, it would fit. The, the contours are the same in that area. Okay. It's just what was the bay, the, the section forward of that was the environmental control system bay. They needed a little more volume there. So okay. six inches of the 10 went to a bigger chiller and the four inches went to making the landing gear simpler and more reliable. So you guys are really having to do a lot of fabrication. This is we are. not just slapping pieces on the airframe at all. Well, there's, there's several things. I refer to it as aviation archaeology. First, we have to figure out what was original, what was not. You know, what, when we scrape off old paint and, and some of the layers they've put on this thing to find out what did this thing look like when it started, what parts stay and what parts don't. Now we've started working on the wings, and I'll show you a good example of, of what we've had to go through there. Um, we scraped off the paint. The red you see here is the original red, white, and blue airshow paint job uh, here on the flapper on. Yeah. Um, well, while we're at this end, I'm going to take one other topic. Sure. I've had several people online ask me, how do the wings attach? Okay. So you see these big fittings here. Don't hurt yourself. I'm not trying not to trip over our jack stand. This is a three-quarter inch bolt. There are 20 of these, 
20 of them. There's 20 of them, and you see where the holes are in the fuselage. So there's a, a 16 bolt pattern. There's four main bulkheads, and those are exactly the same place as production, by the way. Okay. Uh, they are, you know, that's what carry the bending loads, and there's big frames through the aircraft that, that take those loads. Originally, they had these bolts, which are called MS 21297s. And they're, they're really strong. This is a 250 KSI high heat treat uh, inspect. You know, it, it's been crack inspected. It, it's a super strong bolt that I just cannot find anywhere to buy. Okay. So we don't did, have the original where bolts. Where did these come from? This was some other, uh, something else here in the museum had that bolt. I just okay. recognized what it was. We're going with regular aircraft bolts that are 150 KSI, so we're only going to have a 4.5 or 5G airplane. Oh, no. If we ever had to fly, we'd be <laughs> G-limited. Uh, but where those go is they come from inside the fuselage, and you see we've got one of these panels open on top of the fuselage here. Yeah. Those are the fuel tank access, and these bolts actually come from the inside through these fittings. And then okay. in production, they, they get torqued to about 300 foot-pounds. So there's a guy with a 6-foot torque wrench. I thought this was all supposed to be easy to maintain. Well, putting it together, that's pretty easy. Okay. Because okay. all these holes are just on a flat plane. Okay. That this wing can only go on one way. All right. So, so you get it lined up. It. Once again, in the factory, they've got a special jig or they right. use the crane to pick it up. Right. We're going to have to make a, a special rig to do this to get the holes lined up. But we've got a plan for how we're going to do that. Now, that led to another thing to get into these tanks. Once again, we found a bunch of rusted screws. <laughs> So that leads to drilling out screws, but then you have to replace the nut plates. So we've had guys doing nothing but fixing these access panels. Wow. You know, getting rid of the corrosion, getting it ready to put the bolts on, to put the wing on. There's, there's several steps that have to go right in a row. Well, let me do a little commercial here. We've been looking for a 4,000 stand. Yes, a 4,000 engine. If knows what a 4,000 stand is, it's really not in the inventory much anymore, but they used them for A4s a lot and F8s to, for the tail and the engine. If anybody knows of an F, uh, a 4,000 stand that we could uh, even just borrow. Yeah, it's that, an engine cart, 4,000 yeah, series cart, engine cart. Uh, would allow us to articulate the, uh, the wing to be able to install it. Yep. So let's go back out okay. to the wing tip. Talked about another piece of aviation archaeology. The prototype wing was 20 square feet smaller than what they did in production. Okay. And the lab wanted to make the wing look like a production airplane in terms of the relationship of the stores and things they hung on it. So they made a six inch wingtip extension out of sheet metal and they put a big doubler inside it. You can see the double, double thickness here. Oh yeah. So this, this is the wingtip rib and this chunk of aluminum here is what the wingtip missile launcher attaches to. Okay. So what they did was they went from here out to here. Now when this was all put together with that rib trapped in there, there were about 150 screws per side. <laughs> you know, this is all the screws we took out to get this out so we could get this out, clean it up. Wow. That'll be reinstalled here after we reprime and retreat this. And this so will how go in long here. did this take everybody to get that? Off? This was several Saturdays. Several Saturdays, okay. So we got all this removed and these screws, nice example of a nice rusty screw that you put steel screws in aluminum, they get like this, and then you don't move for 40 years. Yeah. And the only way we got these out of here is we used a trick called a screw knocker, which is a rivet gun with a screwdriver on the tip of it. There we go. And that shakes all the rust loose while you're turning it. Yeah, WD-40 doesn't always does it. We it's did a lot of WD-40, yeah. a lot of penetrating oil, but we had to get all these screws out to rescue this tip rib and put it back in here. The other thing they did, we talked about how they stretched the fuselage 10 inches. Right. We, uh, they discovered they, they actually moved the leading edge flap assembly forward 10 inches by making these big aluminum blocks Originally, there was a... Uh, so that's an extender, essentially. That's an extender, and they just put sheet metal over the gap. Okay. So they made the wing the right size, kind of the long way around. So we've got to take those out of there. This fitting on the leading edge flap, if I can get this loose, actually belongs in there. And they had a six okay. inch extension on this tip also. We've taken that away. Once again, you can see the red airshow paint. You can see some of the light blue. Remember this airplane, when it first rolled out, 
had that baby blue, air superiority right. blue paint yeah. job. Blue and cream. So aviation archaeology, we're finding layers of paint. The red is, is over the top of the blue, and then we get down to bare metal in places. Chase, I'd like to be able to answer your questions, but I'm, I'm with the, it's so bright I'm having trouble reading. So we'll pick up answers to your questions uh, later on yeah. offline. Other cool things, one of the really great parts about working on a historic airplane like this is people want to find things and bring us new toys. Okay. On the table here is a set of rudder pedals. And they are original YF-16 rudder pedals. Oh, really? Wow. And the way we can tell that is from the part number. It starts with 401. 401 Charlie means it's a control, flight control part. Wow. And the only difference between these this one has this purple paint here, okay, which tells me it was used in the flight control simulator. Oh, really? This, okay. this was for the ground simulator, but okay. um, we recognize the, the mechanism and the way the brake pedals worked was unique to the YF-16 and the number is unique. So this will eventually go back in the jet because it is an original part number that matches. Okay. Um, Alamo Aviation, big parts depot place down in San Antonio, had bought these as part of a surplus deal. They, they'd bought several tons of stuff from Lockheed. Okay. And this was in the pile, and somebody recognized what it was and sent it to us. Wow. Well, I mean, we we found so many things like this. It's like the ammo can. Yes. That that we found that uh, has actually the serial was, number one for this airplane. Yes. And it's been sitting in a warehouse someplace for 40 years. I mean, yep. it's just uh, we've been so fortunate with some of that kind of yep. stuff. The landing gear. Yeah. Getting a landing gear from Shepard Air Force Base from a yep. wrecked jet, um, and the fact that it fit. It's been amazing. Yeah. Uh, we got the landing, the nose landing gear doors back in place, and if we walk around the other side, I'll okay. show you something. Here, I'm gonna uh, let everybody look down the. Look into the intake. inlet. We've everybody, also been working on this fixing the lower lip. The intake. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it was still had the scrape on it. Didn't yeah, it? we've been working on that. Okay, we're back. Okay, sorry. No problem. Phone, the phone was overheating, so we were we're here in the shade. And, uh, and we're continuing to march. So Kevin, you were saying. Oh, we we're talking about the nose landing gear. The other thing that's unique about the YF-16 is the nose landing gear was in two pieces. One piece covered the wheel and the other piece came up with the, uh, the oh, strut. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. And yeah. so it's on, hinged on the two different sides. All the production ones are a single piece door. Um, once again, we know these are original parts from the part numbers on them. And you see the yellow piece at the bottom on the last flight of this airplane on August of 1979, the nose landing gear broke. Oh. And once again, as part of our aviation archaeology, we found the place where the actuator broke off the, the mount. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, and it's now held in with safety wire and some other wow. bolts and things just to make it fit in there. But when the gear collapsed, that yellow part didn't get out of the way and was ground off. Oh, okay. So that was a okay. sheet metal repair we've had to make to replace material that was left scattered down Carswell's runway. One more fabrication, right? Yeah. So that's the thing we've been going through is, is fixing parts. Uh, I said once we get the wings on, we'll get the airplane down off jacks. We wanted it to stay stable on sure. the jack stands while we locate the wings, get those on there. And when do you think you're going to have the wings on the airplane? I expect to have the wings on this month. Really? We've okay. got all the hardware now. Uh, we've got a plan for how we're going to make a lifting platform that lets us tilt it and get you know work in all three dimensions to get the holes lined up. Okay. Well, what we may do is uh, when you uh, the day you're going to do the wings, we may just uh, we do have a our, live video do a live video of, of putting yeah. the wings on and, and watching how that goes. We've actually had some other things when we were working on the wings. We had to flip them over several times. Yeah, we've noticed. And that, and that was a, a, an interesting evolution without factory tooling. Yeah. Uh, ways to use forklifts and that weren't really designed to do that, but we got it done. Didn't hurt anything or anybody, and it's all good. It's it's kind of our uh, combat combat field maintenance that we do here. It is. It's it's so. it's definitely field expedient maintenance. Yeah. So uh, now you folks are going to be here next week for hops and props. We will. So, this is one of the featured airplanes. So people can come out and look at this, uh, look yep. at the airplane, ask you guys questions we'll be about here. it. Uh, we've got a little book of, of show and tell that sh you know what shows what we've done for the last 18 months. Every okay. week. We take a few more pictures and write some words about why did we do this? Why did we take this yeah. part? Yeah. How does it go back together? That's why we position the wing to show where it's going to fit on the airplane. On the other side, that's very nice. That's yeah, to show for good. hops so, and props. Uh, for those of you who are not aware of hops and props, this is our uh, craft beer festival next weekend on October 2nd. Uh, that's Saturday. 
Uh, tickets are available online this week at an online pricing, but uh, the day of the event they go up. Yeah. So uh, get your tickets this week. Weather's supposed to be good, maybe a little rain in the morning, but like they say in Portland, when it rains, we just still drink beer. So still. at any rate, so that's what we're going to continue to do. You guys are doing amazing work here, and a bunch of uh, bunch of your crew. We gave uh, one year anniversary yeah. pins today uh, because not only just working on this project for a year, but you guys have helped out with the other ones too. So oh yeah. It's, it's, yeah, we've got guys like Steve Smith, who is a, a, a ex Navy weapons loader, and when they needed to hang stores on the Mohawk, yeah, he was the right guy to show them how to work the bomb rack, so we didn't drop anything on anybody's toes. Yeah, that's always a good thing to do. So, um, anything else that you'd like to tell people about the airplane before we uh, we call it quits here for today? Uh, we've got a mold made for the nose. Okay, uh, that's over at a shop over in Dallas. We have to go get that. Uh, so we will eventually have a new nose on the airplane. Uh, we've identified the colors of paint we need for this to get okay. it back to its 1975 red white and blue paint job okay uh, that's that's easily six or eight months down the road we got we got something for the tail of the airplane in too didn't oh, we? oh we did we, we got a nozzle do we have time to walk out there and look yeah we do the, the if the if the phone will, uh, if the phone will work if we're gonna go look stay at with this us. we'll close with that yeah the air force flight test museum at edwards air force base helps us chase parts and things and we knew we wanted to have a good way to close out the back end of the airplane. They had just a fake sheet metal nozzle on it when we got it. It was just sort of an approximation of a, a nozzle. And they found us an F-100 tail feathers, we call them turkey feathers, okay. and tailpipe. Now the afterburner segment is actually on the engine itself, but this is the afterburner pipe. Look at that. So we have, and it's even tagged, they, they basically, Edwards, it, in the Air Force paperwork, just reassigned this part to our tail number, which is still an active tail number in Air Force inventory. Wow, isn't this something? So that's the, uh, the part that opens and closes when you go to afterburner. Uh, the tailpipe has a liner in it, has cooling air so it doesn't burn through an afterburner. And it uh, says YF-16 on it. It says why it's tagged for the YF-16. So this is really kind of the icing on the cake, isn't oh, it? Oh yeah, this will be the last thing we put in. And what we're gonna do is, where this flange is, is where it joins the engine, but that's also where the main engine mounts are in an F-16. Okay. So we'll pick it up at this point on this flange. Uh, we'll make a mount. We're gonna close it out with a piece of sheet metal and get a photograph of what the back of go. the turbine should look like. So when you look up the tailpipe, you'll see the turbine. We don't, they're not passing out whole engines. No, they're not. No, and we don't not. need 3,000 pounds of weight in the back end of our unloaded YF-16. Well, before we overheat again, I'm going to just, I want to thank Kevin for being with us again today and updating us. We've made some, these guys have made some great progress and uh, we're looking forward to more and uh, come on out next weekend for Hops and Props. Have a, have a cool beer. We got 14 brewers and 57 beers next weekend. Life is good. Life is good. So come on out and take a look at the YF and all the rest of the stuff. The Mohawk is here. The Harriers weren't here. So yeah, the Harriers put back together. It's all come, good. Come on out. So for now. Uh, with Jim Hodson and, uh, and Kevin Renshaw here at the Fort Worth Aviation Museum. Thanks, folks. See you next week.